latest edition of Chalk Talk from the Denver Pioneers talking Denver men's hoops as the calendar gets closer and closer to the month of February. Alongside Pioneers head coach Jeff Wolverine, my name is Tyler Mon. Not actually alongside physically, but probably like on your Zoom screen right now, something like that. Coach, what's up? How are you? How you doing, Tyler? I'm Good great. To see you this morning. Absolutely. It's uh, this is our second conversation. We did our uh, our coaches show for the radio a little while ago. Uh, we've had some fun stuff to talk about as of late. It's been a fun last couple of games for you and your team. A road win over the Kansas City Ruse uh, last week and then a, a big victory over the Omaha Mavericks on Saturday, 94-63. The final on that one, the biggest win over a D1 opponent in uh, over three years for this Pioneers team. Uh, it's a feel-good stretch uh, for this squad as of late. Tell me what the mood's been like for this team. Well, the mood's great, Tyler. I, I, it's just great to see the progress on the court. Uh, you know, all year long, I've been telling you, we, we've been making progress. And as a coach, you see that in so many different ways. And it's it's the culture of the program. It's the camaraderie. It's the chemistry. And now you're starting to see on the court, we're doing some things a lot better than we did earlier in the season. You know, we've, we've hit some areas that have been troublesome for us, and we've gotten better. Our transition defense, our defensive rebounding. You know, the way we shared the ball against Omaha the other night, uh, I mean, that just that, that's the way the game's supposed to be played, Tyler, you know, where you you pass up good shots and you get great shots and and guys don't have any that you play completely unselfish. And the only agenda is to get the team a great shot every time down. And we, we did that. We shot 57 percent from the field against Omaha. We had 20 assists. We executed our offense really, really well and, and did a nice job on the defensive end as well. You only turned the ball over four times. You got your first collegiate career double-double from Mikey Hen, who had 13 and 12. Devin Smith went off again uh, and captured Summit League Player of the Week honors. We talked about this on the Coaches Show uh, earlier today, but he is the first Pioneers freshman to ever do that in the Summit League, and he is the first true freshman to win that weekly award from the Summit League since David Jenkins did for South Dakota State in 2018, a guy who's with Utah now in a, in a Power 5 conference. Um, Coach, to see the continued climb of these guys for your freshman class, you know, Tevin's kind of leading the way, but it feels like every game there's somebody else uh, to see that accolade for Tevin and, and what it means to him, what it, mean to, it means to his teammates. What does that mean to you as his head coach? Yeah, that's great. And, uh, you know, I, I've told the team all along that, you know, the individual accolades come when the team is successful. And this is a great example this week. We win two games and Tevin plays two good ball games and gets some individual recognition to go along with all the attention that the team is getting, which, which is just great. And, you know, it, it's, we, we, when we came here as a coaching staff, we, you know, you use the portal to, to get a couple of pieces that you think you need, you know, and Mikey and Peyton and KJ have provided us with tremendous leadership and mentorship to our younger players. And it was a component that we needed, but you didn't want to mortgage the future you know, to be good this year. And so we wanted to do a good job evaluating and bring in a freshman class that we thought could lay the foundation for future success of our basketball program. And I think with the four freshmen that you see on our roster this year that are playing, uh, you, you see just uh, great progress uh, almost from, you know, with Tevin, gosh, it's almost game to game, but certainly yeah. week to week. And uh, they're, they're you know, Tevin has acclimated himself to the speed of the game, the athleticism, the speed, the quickness, and, um, uh, and, and really, really getting, you know, being successful and being a hard guard for people. And, uh, you know, Coben, I think he was three for six from three the other day. I, I tell you what, he, he is such a good shooter on the move. And against Omaha, we were able to run a lot of sets for him. And uh, his footwork is elite. Uh, his stroke is elite. And, um, you know, Pedro, I, I think, helped us out with five rebounds uh, in that game as well. Uh, Toko kind of got back on track and uh, I think had 11 points. And, you know, when you look at those four freshmen in the Omaha game, you know, I think it accounted for about 42 points, 15 rebounds, close to 60 percent from the field, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you, you know, you, you feel good that uh, with their progress, certainly. And the progress has happened because they've been coachable every day. And they come into work every day and they're receptive to suggestions, ideas, and constructive criticism. And it's just really cool to see that, you know, they've believed the message that we've sent. They've trusted the process. And now everyone has seen the result, which, which, is, which is really great. 
We talked so early on in the season about the the tangible moments of success for a team, which come when you get in the win column. And over the the course of some of the early season, you know, bumps in the road with a difficult schedule and a long time on the, uh, you know, away from home playing six straight road games in a December. Uh, there are moments where it's frustrating because you know, you're getting better. Your team knows it's getting better, but the wins weren't coming. Now right. the wins are coming. And uh, you know, me, I've got a, a background in baseball and in Bull Durham, there's a quote, we won a ball game yesterday. We win one today. That's two in a row. Oh, we win one tomorrow. That's called a winning streak. It has happened before. You guys have a chance at three wins in a row coming up on Thursday. Um, and to be in a stage right now where you're at such a pivotal point in the conference season, to be playing so well at this stage, what is the momentum and the feeling like with this group? It seems like when I show up at, at practice and at shoot around, these guys are so fired up to be on the floor. And I think especially now being at home, they're fired up to be playing games. That translates. I mean, that sort of enthusiasm translates into what they do on the floor, uh, which I would imagine as a coaching staff is kind of nirvana. That's what you want from your team. Yeah, And, and you can't draw that up. You can't tell them, uh, it, you know, the, the chemistry is something that uh, organically happens uh, within a team. And it's the experiences that they have. It's bringing in high character individuals and high integrity people. Who, who enjoy the success of others, who, who invest, you know, and, and investment is one of our core values. And we talk about it's investment into your own game. It's investment into your life and taking advantage of academic opportunities. It's an investment in your teammates and being concerned about them and helping them. And, and you know, those, those traits are really reflective of the way we play. And you come to enough practices practices to see that's the way our guys interact with each other and you know I, I will tell you we shared a story with the guys this last week it's called the stone pounders credo okay I don't know if you've heard this before but it, it's you, you know that that stone cutter stone cutter not stone pounder but that stone cutter you know hits that stone you know every day every day blow after blow you know 100 200 300 500 blows and then it, at some point, you know, the, the stone gets cut and it's not the last cut that shapes that stone or the last time he hits it, but it's all the ones before it, if that makes sense. And we kind of use that analogy with the team and, you know, it, it's the work that we did in the summer and the work that we did in the fall. And it's the adversity that we went through and, and enduring a six game road trip and, and losing streak and, you know, how did we respond to that adversity? Did we stay together as a basketball team? You know, and it's all of those experiences and all of those blows and all of that persistence and resilience that has kind of led us to where we're at right now. And um, I, I thought that really resonated with our guys. It's such a fun spot to be in with this program right now. And, uh, you know, the attention that your your program has started to receive as of late as well. Our, uh, our SID, Chris Smith, is on the call with us right now. Three of the TV networks have been down to practice in recent days. Uh, I talked to uh, one of Denver's best uh, columnists, Paul Klee, a DU alumnus, and to come in this weekend to check out the Pioneers. Like, people are taking notice now. They're taking notice in the community. That's got to feel pretty gratifying. I know that's not what you do it for, but to see that people all of a sudden are going, oh, look at Denver. Denver's playing pretty well. Even in the Summit League, the Reaching the Summit podcast this week, one of their guys said, nobody has told Denver they're not supposed to be winning these games and playing this well in their first year under new coaching staff. The respect is really starting to come too, which has been very cool to see. Um, it, it is. And, and, you know, I think there's a common denominator to why I'm here, uh, to why our coaching staff is here to why the nine players that we recruited this year are here to the, uh, the four players that, that held over from the, the past regime. Uh, and, and the common denominator is that we, we thought that collectively we could do something. And our, certainly our goals and our objectives were to do something that hasn't been done in a while here at DU. And, and ultimately, you know, longer term to do something that's never been done. But uh, it, it's gratifying to be able to make progress and say you're doing some things that haven't been done in four or five years in the program. And certainly, you know, as a coach makes you feel like you're on the right track. And, and I think as a player too, Tyler, uh, you know, the messages and the lessons that we've tried to teach, uh, the, the guys have trusted the process. They've had faith in us and faith in each other. And um, it, it's you know, I, it wasn't that long ago, I, I think I was telling you on some of our, our broadcasts, I just want them to experience a little success. They've worked so hard 
They, their intent is so good and, and, you know, they need to see a little bit of success and uh, it, it's, it's gratifying to them as well that uh, that's happening. And then my job as the head coach is to make sure even with, you know, the, the limited success that we've had that, you know, you, you, you stay hungry and you remember how you got the success, you, you know, and you don't forget that and you don't take anything for granted. And, you know, I told the team yesterday, I said, gosh, th this should make us hungrier than ever for success and willing to do whatever it takes to get better. So uh, we, we've had a good mindset. And, and I think that that will continue to hold true as we move forward. All right, coach, final point for you. Um, you know, we still got a substantial portion of this season left, 10 or so conference games. But coming up on Thursday, you got a chance to, to play essentially for the four spot in the conference right now uh, with Kansas City coming into town. Then you get Oral Roberts on Saturday, another tough challenge. Uh, these next two games are, are big ones, big opportunities for your squad to get these two teams at home. You've got the road win over Kansas City, but we talked on our, our radio show this week about just what a challenge Kansas City presents with their unique style, how aggressive they are, the defense they play. And then Oral Roberts on Saturday, that was a sweet 16 team a year ago. Um, but this feels like a very good time of the year with the way your team has played uh, to get these two games coming up this weekend. What are your biggest keys for Thursday and Saturday against KC and ORU? Yeah. Yeah. The way Kansas City has a very distinct defensive style and it's different from the way anyone else in the league plays. And they, they're going to disrupt you so much that they're not going to let you run your offense. And, you know, thinking back one game against Omaha, their defense allowed us to run our offense and we were a very, very effective. We executed very well. This is not that type of game. And they, they get out when they're one pass away and they deny you to 30, 35 feet and they put great pressure on the ball and you have to escape the pressure. And the only way to do that is off the bounce. So it's not moving the ball so much, but breaking the defense down and then making good decisions once you've penetrated the paint. Our decisions could have been a little better in the first time around, but, you know, it was the first time that we faced pressure like that. And uh, we've certainly targeted that with our team and given them examples on film of how we can do a better job handling the pressure. And, you know, maybe you're not looking to break the defense down by getting the ball to three sides, but looking for quick hitters uh, a, a little more in this game. So, um, you know, I think as, as we go through the second round in league, uh, our guys have done a really good job. Our, our guys are great students. They're really intelligent guys. And sometimes that translates into basketball smarts and savvy. Sometimes it doesn't. I think in our case, it does. Uh, and, and I've been very pleased with all of the things that, you know, you think about it, we have a brand new system. You know, no, nobody, right. this was new for everybody. You know, a year from now, that'll be a great advantage for us that the system is in place. But uh, th these guys have done a really good job at taking all of that in, learning it, comprehending it, and then, you know, developing an expertise in it and getting good at it. So uh, as we get around to the second round of league, you know, you make uh, tweaks to what you, you did the first time and you do things a little differently defensively. You put in some additional things offensively just to, uh, you, you know, you, you want to hit your opponents with something they haven't seen in a while. And, and then I told my staff this morning, we should have an airtight game plan. I mean, we know what they do. We, and there's no excuse not to be ready for it. Well, we got a fun week coming up for Pioneers Hoops here on campus at DU as Thursday night at Hamilton Gymnasium, a seven o'clock tip off for Denver and Kansas City. Saturday afternoon, the Pioneers welcome Oral Roberts to town. He's the head coach of the Pioneers, Jeff Wilbur, and coach. We'll see you down there this week. And uh, best of luck against KC and ORU. Great. Let's tell our listeners to come on out and they'll enjoy watching our team play. I've said that from the start and uh, you watch a team that, you know, strives to be the hardest playing team on the floor that plays unselfishly and uh, the way the game's supposed to be played. And uh, Hamilton gets loud when we've got you there and it is a heck of an atmosphere. So come on out. If you haven't gotten a chance to be at a Pios game yet this year, uh, there are some good things building right now uh, inside Hamilton gymnasium and coach. Uh, we'll see you down there on, uh, on th well, I'm going to come bother you at practice tomorrow, but I'll see you on Thursday for Kansas city. Looking forward to it. Thanks Tyler. Wrapping up this edition of Jock talk from the Denver Pioneers. We'll talk to you next time. Great.